Welcome back to Breezy the Teacher's YouTube channel. My name is Miss Brianna. Today we're going to be focusing on the Plumeria or Frangipani tree. Now I know usually you've seen some videos on math or me doing a read aloud, so we, I'm really stepping out of my realm here and I would like to do a little science with you. So what I'm going to be teaching you how to do today is to properly propagate or regrow the Plumeria tree. So I have this tree in my front yard. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it usually does because I've already trimmed it so um, if you want to look that up you can look it up after this video you would just type in the plumeria or frangipani in the search bar so uh, just a little bit um, about the plumeria tree before we get started the plumeria or frangipani tree grows in subtropic and tropical areas so areas that are hot they get a lot of rain in the summer and springtime and they're also humid Areas like this will include, but they're not limited to, Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean, and South America. If you want to do a little extra research after this video is done, I encourage you to look up the types of plumeria trees that you can find in those four areas, in Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean, and South America. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. The first thing that we are going to be talking about today is plumeria growth. Then the second thing is the type of plant. It is a deciduous plant. If you don't know what deciduous means, that means <clears throat> it is falling off at maturity. So whenever the frangipani tree matures completely and it's grown all of its leaves and all of its flowers, it becomes, or it starts to fall off. So, sorry, the wind is blowing just a little bit. Uh, so all of those leaves and all those flowers begin to fall off once the tree matures and uh, being a deciduous plant it also means that they lose their leaves seasonally so usually the plumeria tree will lose its leaves during the winter time and then in the spring in the early spring to mid spring it'll start blooming again so the third thing that we are going to learn about are the flowers the flowers, uh, they're so fragrant. I hope that one day you can go and find one of these trees and smell them. We'll talk about a little, we'll talk a little bit about those flowers later. The fourth thing is the sap, we'll touch quickly on that. And then the fifth and last thing will be the history and the beliefs of the plumeria tree. So the first thing I want to do is show you all of the materials that I'll be using today. Of course, when you're planting, the first thing that you want to get are a pair of gloves. It is not necessary, but if you want gloves so your hands don't get dirty, you can definitely use them. If not, you can just use your bare hands. Just make sure to wash them afterwards. The second thing that I have is a shoveling tool to dig down deep into the soil. Third thing is a pot. And I also have a spray bottle full of water. And since I'm replanting these after I've already uh, trimmed the tree, I am also using some root growth hormone, okay? And of course, when you are planting new trees, you also need to use soil. So this is just a bag that I already had open in my house that I'll be using today. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I want you to look at all of these trimmings from my tree. I'm gonna show you good trimmings and bad trimmings. So when you go to trim the plumeria tree, you want to always try to cut at an angle. If you see here, if you can see the angle that I cut at, we'll get into what that is later. Now, some of these don't look like they've been cut at an angle because they've been drying for over a week. So I have different types. I wanted to show you um, what you can do with all of these. But before we get started, there is one here that I will not be able to use. While it was drying, it became a little sick. So this one will not be able to use, unfortunately, but we're just gonna put him off to the side for now. So once you, tri once you trim off your, your piece from the plumeria tree, you wanna make sure that you've taken off all of these lovely little leaves, all of these markings right here that are lighter on, on the tree branch are from the leaves. All I did was pluck them off one by one. Once I did that, I made sure that I knew where the top was. If you see, here is the top of this, and here is the bottom. If you notice on the bottom, it looks a little brown color. That would be due to me putting cinnamon on it, surprisingly. 
So I'll take you through the whole process of trimming. So once you have trimmed off your plumeria branch, what you have to do is find the bottom of it. The easiest way, if you had a branch like this, the easiest way to find the bottom of it would to be if you see the V. Do you see that letter V right there? That means that this is the right way to replant. If you see an upside down V or a broomstick, that means that you are planting it wrong. This is the end that the leaves come out of. This is the end that the roots will come out of. So let's see if you can find it here. Here's another one. I want you to give me a thumbs up if I'm doing it right. This would be a thumbs down. That would be the way that the leaves are going into the ground. So we want to make sure that we are planting it this way. So after I cut off these trimmings from the plumeria tree and I stuck them a little bit into the cinnamon, I let them dry out for over a week. This is so you can quickly plant your tree however you would like to. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. The first thing that you want to do is take one of your trimmings and I'm gonna start with the smallest one that I have in my little pot right here. I've already put some soil in it. You wanna make sure that you moisten the soil. Stick your hands in there. I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. Just moisten it up just a little bit. Pick one of your branches that you would like to plant. And I think right now we're going to choose this one. He's a little hardy. So what I'm going to do is rub off all of that cinnamon that I previously put on there. I'm also going to put just a tad bit of water on the bottom, rub that cinnamon back off one more time. Get the root growth hormone that I was talking about, open it. Now this is not a necessary step, but I would just like my trees to grow a little faster and healthier. So I'm going to dip the end of the stick into it and tap the rest of it off. And you'll see that the end of it is now white. It has that growth hormone on there. So I'm going to dig my finger in just a little to make a hole and stick it right in there and cover it up with dirt. Now, since this one is a little bigger, I will have to add just a tad bit more soil. And remember, if you're going to add any more soil, you also need to add some water to it. Make sure you pat it down so it will stay. And that's basically it. You can also just put these right down into the ground as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you another one that I'm doing. This is with a bigger pot. No worries though. Since I took all of those trimmings off my tree, I want to make sure that all of them regrow. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump the entire bag of soil in there. And I'll put this on some jet stream so it'll get a little faster. Okay, now you can see that I have a full pot of soil. So what do you think the next thing I have to do is? You said pick one of your trimmings? You are right. So since I have a bigger pot this time, I'm able to use a bigger trimming. So again, there is that cinnamon. I'm just gonna go ahead and rub it off. Spray it with a little bit of water. Dip it into my root grow, growing hormone. Put that off to the side for just a second. Make sure that I have a hole in my soil. and just go ahead and stick it right in there. Now you don't want your trimming to go too far into the soil or else the roots won't have any more growth. And those new leaves
leaves that are coming up won't have anywhere to grow either. So just like that, that's as easy as it gets to regrow. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you what to do, or show you the rest of the things that are on the board. We've already talked about how to regrow the plumeria. We've talked about the deciduous. So I wanna to talk to you about the types of flowers. When you see plumeria trees, they will have different types of colors of flowers. The colors of flowers can include white, pink, red, or yellow. And inside of those, if you see right here, inside of those, they'll have a different color in there. Sometimes if you have a white flower, they'll have pink inside or they'll have yellow inside. Or if you have a pink flower, sometimes they'll have yellow inside. The fourth thing down here is the sap. Now, originally when I went and snapped these off and since I have a bad one right here, I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. So here's one, this is what you do not do. You want to cut this at an angle but I want you to see in just a second, all that sap will start coming out. Now that is called a milky sap. Why do you think that it would be called milk, milky? If you said, because it looks like milk, that's right. Now I don't want to really touch it because it did irritate my skin the last time that I did this. So if you ever do this on your own, make sure that you are wearing gloves or you wash your hands immediately after because the sap will or, or it can contempt, or irritate your eyes and or your skin. So this one, I'm gonna go ahead and stick him in some cinnamon right after I'm done and we'll have another plumeria tree. And the last thing I wanted to talk to you today talk to you about today is the history and the beliefs. If you see this name right here, this is who the plumeria tree was originally named after. That His name is Charles Plumier. He was a botanist in France way back when. He discovered this tree and it was named after him. And um, the last things I want to talk to you about are <clears throat> the beliefs of the plumeria tree. Some people believe that this tree provides shelter for ghosts. Isn't that crazy? So I'm not sure if I believe that, but a lot of people in the world do. The um, people in the Philippines and in Indonesia, they plant these plumeria of frangipani trees in cemeteries. And those who are in Hawaii, they use these in the lays. If you've ever seen um, people with the big flowers around their neck, those are called lays. And a lot of times in Hawaii, they are you. They put the plumeria or the plumeria flowers in there. And the last thing is. Those in Asia, they name this the temple tree instead of the plumeria or the frangipani tree because they plant them around their temples for fragrance reasons. So these flowers smell really, really good. And so they put them around their temples so they can smell them all the time. Well, that's all for today. I hope you learned something new with me. And I hope to see you next time on Breezy the Teacher's YouTube channel. My name is Miss Brianna. See you. Bye. Bye.